Welcome to DXB Today and happy start to your weekend. Today it's all about inclusivity, but what do we have coming up on the show exactly? Dina meets Emirati artist Abdul Latfi, known for his black and white murals across the city. We discuss accessibility and inclusion solutions with the team of DASS Solutions. Plus, we've got talented lap tapper Adam Kadabra joining us with a special performance in studio. Lap tapper, is that exactly what it sounds like where you just tap? That's it? Oh, wow. I'm sure there's more to it than that. Otherwise, I might be on the show next week. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, guys, so it is Friday night. What have you guys got planned for the weekend? I believe your family's in town, Ferris. They are in town, but I'm going to go straight to bed after this because I have to be up at 3 a.m. to get to Ras Al Khaimah for okay. the Ras Al Khaimah Marathon because that's what I'm going to be doing over at Merjan Island. Okay, so while you're pumping your muscles, I'm going to probably head down to Taste of Dubai or even Gulf food. Uh, what about you, Louis? Lots of food options to choose from. Well, Friday, today would be the last day for Gulf food, and tomorrow, I'm sure, you can enjoy all the food you want, a taste of Dubai. Mm. It is definitely a very busy time in Dubai and this episode in particular is, uh, is, is very important to so many people watching out there and very relevant as well. So let's find out who our guest co-host this evening is. Hi, my name is Jessica Smith, Australian Paralympic swimmer, disability inclusion consultant, and I'm so excited to be joining as co-host today. Jessica will be joining us in just a little bit, but first, Dina went down to meet one of the UAE's most unique and well-known artists, Abdullah Lutfi, to take a look at his insightful creations. Check this out. Today we're hanging out with Abdullah Lutfi, a talented artist from the UAE whose vibrant canvases reflect everyday life with humor and insight. But there's more to Abdullah. He's a multi-layered genius on the spectrum and his art, it speaks volumes. Okay, Abdullah, I am a huge fan of your artwork. I'm so happy to be here with you. Tell me, how did you get started? What made you interested in art? Well, as you can see, you know what made me interested in art? Because like, is, for instance, if I was watching cartoons and playing video games and watching animes, and that's how I see the lines on the characteristic, and that's how I draw things in black and white, but the color doesn't suit me because it's too stressful. So I prefer just doing black and white like a comic strip thing. So that's how I became a famous black and white. So why the humor in all of your artwork? I love it, but what made you think about making all your artwork funny? Well, because I've been seeing some televisions and like that, that has these jokes where the people have the TV shows and Cartoon Network and Disney and that. So yeah, that inspires me with their jokes that I think. So I decided to write these bubble words on my black and white works to make it like a funny quotes and comic strips and even the jokes that that has in it too, that makes it funny and make people love it. Now you're raising a lot of awareness for autism. You're doing a fantastic job with that. What is the message that you want to send out to the world? What do you want people to know about autism? Well, I just want to say to the parents for I just want to say to their parents in the world that has autistic person is to just just accept the special needs kids and, uh, and support them and love them for the way they are. Okay, we're surrounded by your artwork here. Tell me about some of your pieces. Well, as you could see, all I did here is black and white because, you know, but way back ago, I used to do the color, but the color didn't suit me well because it's kind of too much of a work and stress. So, so I prefer like doing black and white more than the color because it's more sophisticating and better than the color. These ones are my favorite right over here. Oh, These ones are definitely my favorite. Oh, you think so, eh? Well, as you can see, I did the small ones I did, it's about the quotes, about autistic quotes and some honesty quotes and funny joke quotes. Yeah, so I did some of these funny ones right here and some of them autistic and some of them honesty like that and some fun facts about, about it.
Abdullah Lutfi's journey as an artist and an advocate shows the power of creativity and inclusion. Through his art, he shares stories that resonate with us all, reminding us of the beauty in diversity and the strength in embracing who we are. As he continues to inspire others, Abdullah's legacy is growing, proving yet again that art knows no boundaries. So much talent. And you know, Dean is quite a good painter as well. She is. I've seen some of her work. She's really obsessed with sheep, though. Have you noticed? I have noticed. There's that. a running theme. There's always something a little bit dark, and there's always a sheep involved. So that's a story for another episode, because right now we need to welcome our guest co host, and that is Paralympian speaker author. There's so many things on my list that you've done. Please welcome Jessica Smith. Thank you so much for having me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show. So tell us a little bit about the start of your journey. So I was born in Australia missing my left arm and when I was a young child I was fitted with a prosthetic limb because I think at that stage the doctors sort of saw me as broken and incomplete um, and so I was fitted with my first arm and it led to a very uh, horrendous accident in the kitchen because I can't feel or detect heat. Uh, I didn't realize that when I was reaching up in the kitchen to grab a chocolate biscuit, I'd also knocked a freshly boiled kettle over and I sustained third degree burns to 15% of my body. And so, you know, I, it was a very traumatic experience for my entire family. And growing up, I knew that I was very different. I was missing my arm and I have prominent scarring on my neck and chest. And so from a very young age, I was trying to understand my identity and my place in the world. And I found that through sports. Uh, you know, I wanted to be able to prove to the world that I was capable of so much more than what their assumptions were about what I couldn't do because of the way I looked. And sport gave me the, the opportunity to, to prove that I was able to push the boundaries. And I fell in love with the sport of swimming. And from a very young age, from the age of 13 through to 21, I represented Australia and it gave me a sense of freedom and a sense of exhilaration and a platform to be able to share my story in the hope that I can also be a voice for people of determination, people living with a disability who can't share their voice and can't share their story. So it's been a, it's been a journey. Je Jessica, I have, I have goosebumps just listening to your story. It is so inspiring. Um, it's interesting to know how people deal with disability today versus when you know it happened to you a few years ago and also your love for sport I mean you experienced so many traumatic events because of your disability what made you take on something like sports which is known for you know injuries and accidents very true I think there was this innate drive within me to push against the status quo and so I wasn't going to be limited by the fact that I had a disability and so the most obvious way to prove that was through movement and sport you know growing up in Australia it was sort of very natural to me um, but you're right there's also something there about wanting to push hard and and be determined and go against the grain and to try really hard so you know it was something that I thrived under pressure and high performance sport uh, and I, I no longer swim now but I've taken up marathon running which is com very completely different but I think there's something there about never wanting to settle for mediocre and making sure that there's always a goal there's always something to strive for and I think if I can replicate what I do in my sporting life in my personal life and be a role model for my children and and people all around the world to say that disability isn't wrong or bad and it doesn't have to stop you from you know living out those dreams and those goals and those aspirations. I hope you don't mind my asking. Earlier on, you mentioned that when you were born, you were fitted with a prosthetic arm, but I could clearly see now this is definitely more high tech than that. And technology has been amazing nowadays for people of different abilities. How different is it from a prosthetic arm, if you don't mind my ask? Very different. So the arm I had when I was a child, I had quite a few. It resembled more like a claw. It was very heavy and difficult to get used to, which is obviously what led to that you know, terrible accident. The technology that we have today, and the reason that I am now using this arm is because it is so advanced and it is changing lives so if you were to ask me do I need this probably not um, I've lived 30 years without having to use a prosthetic limb so I've been able to adapt I've been able to find my own way of doing things the reason I wear this arm today is because the advancements in technology are also advancing the social conversations around disability so if I had worn this 10 or 15 years ago I think there would have been a lot of apprehension and maybe even fear from from society but now I, you know, I do a lot of school visits um, when I walk into see the students 
they're excited. They're like, wow, she only, she has, sorry, she has a robotic hand as opposed to saying, oh, she only has one arm. And so if I can help steer that conversation for the younger generations and use the wonderful advancements in technology, then I have to be able to do that. that I feel that that's my responsibility. So it's kind of a cool accessory, but for so many people who uh, are born without their arm now, or they have an accident or an illness, this technology is life-changing and it's available right now. And I didn't have that when I was young. So I feel that this is my way of paying it forward and doing what I can to help those conversations around disability and inclusion. And it is very important to have people like you to talk about these things because inclusivity is important. And I feel like when it comes to a lot of things, people don't think about the accessibility aspect when it comes to venues, when it comes to roads, when it comes to getting around, when it comes to fire escapes. Why exactly? Like, are you seeing an improvement when it comes to these things? Yeah, there's definitely improvement and I think that comes from the social perspective as well of that we're having more conversations and the fact that you know this <coughs> episode is dedicated to talking about that I think is so wonderful and but we have to sort of change our perspective on what accessibility is. When people think about disability we often think about somebody who's a wheelchair user. Of the 16% of the global population living with a disability, only 8% are wheelchair users and so we have to broaden our understanding of what disability is and what accessibility is so it's not just infrastructure it's digital accessibility as well it's people accessibility how is the people culture within an organization and within an environment where people of determination are accessing and and how can that be more inclusive so it, it's quite broad and it's quite complex but the fact of the matter is the more we talk about it the easier some of those barriers are to sort of remove and make sure that people understand what accessibility actually is. Jessica, I'm holding here some books and I believe they're very familiar to you. Can you tell us about them? So I wrote the Just Jessica series, uh, three children's books about my journey. So Jessica's first day at school, Jessica's first swimming race and joining the band. And I wanted to create resources that represent the diversity that we see in everyday life. I wanted children to be able to use these books and for parents and caregivers and teachers as an opportunity to start really important conversations about disability and about diversity. So they're stories that every child and every family can relate to, but just with that added diversity of a, the female character being the main character and she also lives with one hand. They're not books about disability itself and they're not for um, children living with a disability, they're for children everywhere and um, you know I've set myself the target to read to a million children around the world. So far 40,000 so I'm still quite a way away but 40,000 is a large number and so I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to um, you know, visit all the schools around the UAE and share this story. And I think, you know, if you can do that in a fun way and use this as an opportunity to invite children into the conversation, um, again, it's it's my responsibility and way to... I mean, I'm going to have a read as well. Oh, yeah. they're, they're beautiful books. <laughs> they are. Very, I'm sure my kids would love them. I'm well, sure here you go. <laughs> I was hoping you'd pass it on. <laughs> you know, Jessica, as a mum myself, I'm really fascinated to know and understand and how to really have these conversations with children who are not in the same realm as you are. I think this is definitely a very, very important topic. Uh, please stick around. There's so much more we would like to ask you and learn from you. Thank you so much. Coming up, we are looking at solutions with a team that made Expo City accessible. Plus, if you know someone with disabilities looking for a job, there's a company that will do just that. So stay right there.